Let's be honest, this little guy scope setup looks pretty badass. shooting with Skywatcher products. I've got the Evo Star 72 ED. That's my main telescope. My mount is an EQM35. So both of those are Skywatcher products. So it just made sense to me that I should go out and get the 50 millimeter guide scope from Skywatcher. After all, it has ED glass. The problem is, let's take a look on Amazon. Okay, currently on Amazon, they don't even have it in stock. But let's just say you wanted to go to one of their people who are selling through Amazon, click on the available from these sellers, Take a look at these ridiculous prices. Okay, forget Amazon. Let's go over to OPT Telescope and see what they've got. And here it is, $429 American. Are you kidding me? For a guide scope? But hey, it's worth it. It's got ED glass. Why in the world would you need ED glass for a guide scope? You're not imaging through the guide scope. The guide scope has one purpose, and that's to find a star, lock in on the star, and send information to your computer. That's it. Why in the world would you put a lot of money into ED glass or even an expensive guide scope? What I got here is the SV Bonnie 30 millimeter guide scope. I think that's how you say it. That's how I say it anyways. SV Bonnie. I got this on eBay for $50. The camera in the back, it's a ZWO ASI 120mm mini. The whole setup here, $200. Really, why would you want to spend more than that for a guide scope setup? Save that money and buy a cool filter or a new telescope, but you don't want to put that money into an expensive guide scope because really, the job of the guide scope is pretty simple. Now this is a 30 millimeter guide scope, and you might be thinking that that's just not big enough to do what you need it to do, but the truth is 30 millimeters gives me a really wide view of the sky, so there's more stars for me to pick from, and it does a great job of locking in those stars once you get the focus set up, you can really get those stars pretty pinpoint and then PhD2 does the rest of the job for you. So don't spend all your money on your guide scope. Believe me, with this hobby, you're gonna find places to spend that money. Don't spend it here. I'm gonna take you out back and show you what this looks like on my telescope in action. I'll even show you the computer screen of PhD2 to show you how the tracking looks. But really, you don't need anything more than this. $200 out the door, full setup, you're ready to guide. Here it is set up on top of my Evo Star 72 ED. Notice how light and small this telescope is, so I really needed a small guide scope to fit up here. Now if you're using the ASCOM software, you're gonna have one less cord coming out of the back of the camera. I'm not doing that yet. I'm running my camera over to the computer, which comes back up to the camera, and then it goes down to my mount. So you can get rid of one of those cords by simply starting to use ASCOM. I'm not doing that yet though. But here it is, this is the way it looks sitting on top of my telescope. And here we are looking at PhD2. Here is my chart, looks pretty good. Let's go down to the corner and take a look at the numbers. I'm pleased with those as well. This is using my 30 millimeter SV Bonnie guide scope and I'm pretty pleased with the way that it's tracking. I forgot to mention that this is an F4. So this is a super fast scope. I've been using it now for the last couple of weeks. I've had no problems finding stars. I've had no problems staying locked in on stars. This thing has done everything I've wanted it to do. Now, if you've got the need for a bigger scope or you plan to take photographs through the guide scope itself, then go ahead and spend the extra money. Otherwise, this is really a good little setup and I highly recommend it. Thanks for coming with me today. I'll see you guys next time.